Uh, we thank God for your lives. And um, I know you are here and you are ready for what God has for us this morning. Um, time and time again, um, God is speaking to us. And I want us to pay attention to the things he's saying to us in these days. Most of the things we're being told, most of the things God is teaching us in these days is how to be really aware of the world we are living in and how easy it is for us to be dragged or taken away from the things of the Lord. We, we all are in one way or the other vulnerable, but God himself is keeping us and strengthening us and doing everything for us to stand hallelujah unfortunately he will not stand for us till the end he will continue to stand for us and keep us going but it gets to points in our lives or let's say at the end of it all the strength the grace and everything he gave to us we will have to account for it hallelujah and that's why i believe that let's look carefully at things that happened and things that are happening and things that are yet to happen because we may be at a certain point in our lives but we don't only have to think about now, but where my end is going to be. Beloved in the Lord, if it is about only this world that we are proud to be Christians, and we are really excited to be Christians, Paul says that we are of all people most to be pitied. Our end is not here. Hallelujah. I said, our end is not here. No matter what you are doing, beloved in the Lord, no matter what you are seeking, and I don't begrudge you if you are seeking, everybody seeks, no matter what, think, think about how everything is going to end like. There's a guy in the Bible, he didn't think like that. And he regretted. Hallelujah. Amen. I said he did what he regretted. This morning, my theme is very simple. Do not sell your bet right. Don't sell your bet right. Regardless of what is at stake. Regardless of what is being offered to you. No matter what you are going through, even on your bed, bed, do not, do not sell your bed right. It doesn't matter. You may be on your death bed dying. Die in dignity. Hallelujah. And go to heaven. There will be some options. That will be contrary to what you have stood for all your life. Reject them. There will be times in your life that you will go through struggles. And because of the struggles, there will be offers available to you. Options available to you. That will be contrary to what you believe in as a son of God. A child of the most high God. Please. Let them go. Suffer till the end. Regardless of... Because, you know, now it's easy to be enticed, to be deceived with everything. There are things available now, opportunities available now that is so easy for us to be distracted by them and they we, we run after them but we still Christians hallelujah 
we forget our identity as Christians. We forget what we have, we, 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 what blood has bought us. We forget what we stand for. And we let go. Why? Because I'm hungry. Because I need a job. Because I need a marriage. And because I need the marriage, if the guy says, let me sleep with you, I will do it. If the girl says that, in fact, me, I don't know how your performance is, so sleep with me first and let me be sure I, am, I know what I'm going for. Sometimes we go for it. We forget that there is more at stake than marriage. We forget that there, there is more at stake than just food on our table. We forget. Hallelujah. And that's why we are here this morning. And we're going to look at a character in the Bible. A very straightforward, simple character. But their birth in itself means a lot. And it panned out in their lives until when the Father had to bless them. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, do not joke with your bed right. As a Christian, you have a bed right. I'm a child of God. And because I'm a child of God, my bed right is the inheritance of God. Hallelujah. And therefore, I do not have to allow anyone to really deceive me that there is something better than that. And I don't have to really sell my bet right for anything else. Because if I belong to the king of kings, there is nothing else that can be better than that. The only way I can stand for that is when I indeed know who the king of kings is and who I am in him. Hallelujah. Many of us don't know who we are in the Lord. And therefore we don't cherish what we have in him. Hallelujah. As a child of God, God is supposed to be the first in your life. In everything that you do. He's supposed to be the first. He says you cannot save, serve any other God. You cannot put any other God before him. He said even in your love. Love him first with everything that is within you. God is supposed to be first in everything that you do. Everything. Whatever. Every decision that you make. Make sure. That God is first. And you see, the truth is that people will deceive you with all kinds of tricks. But you as a child of God must know who your father is. What his identity is. And then you hold on to that. And walk as bold as you are. If you are the president's son, you are the president's son. As, as long as he remains president, you have privileges. True or false? But worldly presidents, their term will end. But the president or the God that we serve, his term never ends. His term never ends. So if you are his son today, you are his son forever. That is one thing you need to understand. Because if you understand this, I'm telling you, everything, in everything, and in every situation, you know who you are serving. Hallelujah. It is sad that those days, I mean, Christians will say that, yeah, but if I don't do this, what will I eat? What will I have? Well, I mean, when did we forget that he's the provider of all things? When did we forget about that? 
When in our lives did we come to that point where God is no longer the supplier of all our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus? Where in our life did we come to that point? When in our lives? Why have we as Christians turned around and made things more important than him? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's look at Romans 8.32, 8, sorry. Paul wrote to the Roman church and he said, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously, Give us all things. Beloved, I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. I want you to reason with me for a moment. If God will give his only son to, for your benefit, how would he then turn his face and say that when you are in need, he would not supply your need? I don't know if we know the God we serve. I, I don't really know. I, I, sometimes it, it, I, I just think about it and I ask that, do Christians really know him? Because if he would give Jesus to die and save me and you, what is food? What is shelter? That he cannot provide. Have you forgotten that when he is the one who caused the scorching sun upon Jonah's head. But he is the same God who provided a vine to cover him. If he can do that in a minute, in a day, and then remove it the next day, you know he can do all things. Listen, vines do not grow in a day. Go and plant a mango today and see whether tomorrow it will bear fruit. But he is God. Because he has control over everything, he is able to do that. Who is your God? That's the question. Is he the same God? Then I know that he can do it. If he has not done it, there should be a reason why he hasn't done it. hallelujah i know he doesn't want to destroy me so if i i know he doesn't want me to be hungry so if i'm hungry and he's not provided food for me my question is why has he not provided the food what is the reason there could be a reason for it maybe he's strengthening me maybe he's helping me to really he's helping my endurance level so that I can fast because he's seen that I eat too much. Hallelujah. So most of the time, it is not because God doesn't want to give to us. Look, if you understand this, you know that God will not hide anything from you or will not keep anything from you. So if he is not giving or if something is, you asking for something and you are not getting, it doesn't mean that God is not willing to give to you. It means that it may not be the time. It is not right for you. It could be anything. But the truth of the matter is that it is not God's intention to destroy you by not giving it to you. It is for your good. And he says that all things all things my hunger will work together for my good my pain will work together for my good my suffering will work together for my good whatever it takes whatever i go through as long as i remain a child of god will work together for my good hallelujah so everything i am suffering today has to work together at the end of it for my good it's for my good. 
The reason we don't see the end well is because we complain too much. Can you work on the mic? It's too loud. Beloved in the Lord, we need to come to an understanding that all things are supposed to work together for my good. If God, if I should die today, if I should die today, it's for my good. And I'm not afraid to die today because God is working something together for my good. But how can you say that? Isaiah 57 verse 1 tells me, hallelujah, it makes me understand that God takes people away from this earth. They, nobody understands. But he's keeping me. Maybe I'm going to fall tomorrow. God says, come home today. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, the righteous perish. And no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away. And no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Yeah. So maybe my death today is sparing me for some evil that is coming my way. Hallelujah. Listen. The devil doesn't want you to know that truth. Because he wants to scare you with that. He doesn't want you to know that truth. He's like, when you are sick, yeah. But how can a loving God make you sick? Hallelujah. How can a loving God make you die? How can a loving God? Beloved, the devil is a liar. I said he's a liar. And he's lying to us on a regular basis. Even his uncle is a liar. Everybody in his family is a liar. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want you to understand. Don't be afraid of death. Death has been conquered. Death has been conquered. So don't be afraid. He's been scaring us with too many things. So today, beloved, it's so sad that a Christian will still behave like Esau. In this day, a Christian can still behave like Esau. Will say the things that Esau said. Yeah, but if I don't do it, what will I eat? But what about if I die? What about this? What about that? Beloved, God will sustain you. God will keep you. No matter what. No matter what. God intentionally makes some righteous people die. He, look, he intentionally comes and takes them away. Yeah, look, you, if I leave you here, the way that girl is tempting you, you'll fall. Come home. And then people will be crying. Yeah, but God is not good. You, do you know how good God is? He's taking our pastor away. He's taking our prophet away. He's taking our apostle away. Wouldn't him the apostle no face here? If you knew what he was going through, you would thank God that he took him away. Hallelujah. And you know, it's not because of him alone. He takes them away because of the church as well. Because if you, if the, the, the pastor falls into that situation, many of the members will now turn their back on God. In order, listen to me carefully, in order for the people of Nineveh to be saved and the people in the boat to be saved, Jonah has to be thrown overboard. You say the people are wicked. They are not wicked. They are not wicked. Because if they had not thrown him away, they would have died. Jonah would have died. The boat would have sunk. Nineveh would have been destroyed. Hallelujah. When they threw him into the sea, he repented under the bottom of the sea. Not only under the bottom of the sea, but in the, ma- in the, in the belly you can call it big cat, big fish, big uh, sea, whatever, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, it was in something. Hallelujah. And, and he, he had to repent in that kind of place. Look, in your life, you have to go through certain things to make you repent. There are, I know people, 
if they had not gone through what they had gone through, they would never have repented. Uh huh. I agree with you. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, the truth is that God loves us so much and he wants us to place him first in our lives. Regardless of every situation, whether you are sick or strong, make God first. He has the power. You know, one thing that I, I, I still can't, I, I mean, let me say it like this. I'm still concerned about most of us Christians. Listen to me carefully. If Jesus, listen to me carefully, because we don't understand if Jesus can call a dead man who has been buried for four days from the grave. He doesn't go into the grave. He doesn't touch him. All that he says is, he calls his name and he says, come out. And he walks out. And when you have the grave clothes on you, you can't walk. Because your legs are tied. So I don't know whether he came like this. Or he came like this. I don't know. Because he came with everything. And then God said, Jesus said, lose him. You see, so he came bound there is nothing under the sun that can bind you that God cannot set you free look look, these are very simple things that unfortunately the devil has really covered them and he's making you seek some he, he wants you know what what is happening now the devil has made it uh, so difficult for you to understand the word of god you need a pastor or a prophet to make acrobatics to tell you something then that one you believe but the simple scripture that is for life you can't believe it i have to put my head down and put my foot up and tell you where your mother's hometown is and your father's hometown is to believe in what I'm going to say. When did it come to that point? I believe in prophecy. Because if I don't believe in prophecy, I don't believe in the Bible. The Bible is prophecy. And I believe in prophets because God uses me to prophesy. So I believe it. If I don't believe it, then I mean myself, I'm a liar. But what I'm trying to say is that don't put your faith in what I'm going to say. Put your faith in the God that you serve. Because if you continue doing that, you empower me to lie to you. Because I look at your face and you are sad going home because you didn't hear anything. So I have to tell you something. Then you start jumping and dancing. Yeah, I receive. You re- <laughs> I want you to understand that the things you were looking for are so simple and written down for you. They are there in your Bible. Hallelujah. It is difficult for Christians today to read the Bible, but we want to listen to every oh my goodness. We go to every prayer meeting. But we refuse to go to Bible study. Travels. Let's say that there is a Bible study class happening over there. You will not go down. But let's say there is a prophet there. How many of us will go? The whole house. The whole house. Look, they will put, uh, how do you call it, air conditions, everything, powerful lights, everything in a nice place like this. 
they will not go down. Let's put some kind of canopy in some sand and then put you know SM water you know it Caligo and then write prophet is in town and hang it there the place will be full when did we start running away from the word of God by chasing people who will say the word of God when when did it happen and why did it happen and how did it happen hallelujah the most important thing is to know that God is first that's the key because if you get that right everything else is going to fall in place God first nothing more nothing less hallelujah if God is first in your life you're never going to sell your bed right you will not amen, amen. let's move on I, I don't know how many of us believe that God Almighty has caused his son to die for us and because of that He's not going to keep any other thing away from us. I don't know how many of us really understand that. Hallelujah. In, in um, Matthew chapter 6 verse 25, he says that Jesus is speaking to the people. And he says, you don't have to worry about anything. Hallelujah. He says, do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Is not your life, is not your relationship with God better than the food that you will eat or the clothes that you will wear? Look, we, we, we are unfortunately now focusing too much on what we wear and what we eat. We are focusing too much on that to the extent that we're being distracted by everything that... And you know, when we talk about what we eat, I, am, I think for me, I'm talking directly about the cares of this world. Because it's not only about food, but it's about the money in your pocket. It's about the car you want to drive. It's about the position you want to hold in this nation. It's about how big you want to be. It's about how... Look, but all these things are not taking you anywhere. They are temporal. You will leave them one day. My, my mission here is not to really preach to you about what you can have here my responsibility is to let you understand that there is a place to be or a place to go after here and there are only two places one is to be with the devil forever and one to be with god forever and there is no middle ground there's not going to be a place where you will be and then you have a little bit of fire and a little bit of bliss no it's either going to be bliss forever or it's going to be fire forever you have and the choice has to be made today when you die bible says it is appointed unto man once to die after that so after you die there is nothing else you can do so don't wait and unfortunately i don't know when you are going to die if i don't know when i'm going to die if i don't know when i'm going to die i don't know when you are going to die and even the worst part is that i don't know when jesus is coming i may be very strong but he may come today I may not, I mean, like 
none of you look sick and weak. But Jesus can come today. None of you looks like they're going to die tomorrow. But Jesus can come today. The question you need to ask yourself is when he comes, am I ready? Hallelujah. Unfortunately, because we don't think about that, we're rushing and we're just trying to get everything. Jesus is saying, seek me first and I'll provide the rest. We say, Jesus, you are taking too long so we can do it by ourselves. But the truth of the matter is that I'm telling you, beloved, none of us sitting here this morning can do it by ourselves. If we can do it by ourselves, we don't need Jesus. If we can do it by ourselves, we don't need to come to church. If we can do it by ourselves, we don't need the Bible. We can't. There is no way we can. That is why we need him. And that is why we ought to be obedient to him. Beloved, look, I'm not scaring you, but I'm telling you that it's scarier than whatever I can say. If you have an idea about what hell looks like, you will never dread going there. Don't let some food that you will eat deceive you. Better to go hungry and die even in your hunger and go to heaven than to be filled with the devil's meal and end up in hell. Hallelujah. This is not your popular teaching. I know it's not your popular teaching. But it doesn't really matter. It's what your soul needs. It is what your soul needs. Hallelujah. <laughs> Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13a. I just want the A. He says, food for the stomach and stomach for food. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy them both. He will destroy the food and the stomach that took the food. So, listen, if God is going to destroy like that, why are you so eager to feel it? I know you've read Corinthians before. But you overlooked it. Hmm? The Bible is saying that food for what? And the stomach for what? But both of them will go to heaven. Both of them. Why do you pay attention to something that is going to be destroyed? And I said, well, I can't, you know, the truth is that we cannot pretend as if everything is okay. It's not. The church is struggling, Christians are suffering. Why? Because of misplaced priorities. God says, make me first. How many of us in church today, sitting here today, can say to ourselves that God is first in our lives? How many of us? Even as we sit here right now, listen to me. As we sit here right now, let a bullion van, you know a bullion van? You know it. Let a bullion van have an accident here on the road here. And three hundred million dollars fall down. No cameras, nothing, free for all. Go and take. You stop listening to the preaching, you go. This one, no restriction. It's either you continue taking the message. Or you go and have your money and then come back. What will you do? (laughs) 
You jump. <laughs> what will you do? You don't know. Huh? Huh? You, you won't go for the money. You don't want money. This one is free. Did they wear it? Everybody will say, Apostle, please. Pause. My young comrade, I send them to the idea, and that's what we'll see. Yen chakra, we will fire no abba, and their offering a bear correct. Hallelujah. No, that's the reality today. Yeah, my group. That's the reality. So this this may be very graphic, but there are other subtle ways that it's happening to us. Let me, where are the students? Stand up. We know some more university, one sorry. You're going to write your exam, your final exam. And you need that paper to make it. Your, your, your dad has not paid your fees. And suddenly, they said, if you don't pay, you won't write. And you've called home. No help is coming. You're a young woman. Nice. Suddenly, a nice guy who's been chasing you all through the four years shows up. What's happening? Why are you so sad? Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to write a paper today, but if I don't get this, I'm doomed. All my four years here will be wasted. Oh, yeah, I'll pay for you. You sure? Yes, I'll pay for you. When is the paper? Oh, yeah, the paper is today in the afternoon, and it's in the morning. And your dad, he's told you there's no way I'm going to get the money for you. Okay, all right. Okay, if the paper is in the afternoon, uh, you may be hungry as well. Let me go find some food for you. What will you do? That's the reality. You see, beloved, sometimes we pretend as if we are superhuman beings. It is until you get to that point. That is when you know the reality of, of life. And that is why I want you to begin from today to prepare your mind so you can say no. So you can say with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it doesn't matter. If I don't write this exam and that's the end of my life, so be it. God has the power to provide that money. And even if he doesn't provide and I don't write this exam, this exam must not define my life. Do you know what? Because we have just by our own standards made certain things in life define who we are. You are not what you have. Bible says that life does not, I mean, depend on the abundance of your possessions. Not your certificates. Not who you are married to. Not how many cars you have. No! No! No. But if you don't prepare your mind today, you will say yes. You will sit in that car. You will go for that lunch. In fact, it's not only school fees you're going to get. You're going to get more than... You ask for school fees now, you've had lunch already. What is going to be next is what, as a young Christian... You have kept yourself so pure 
for all your years. Maybe you are like 20, 22, 23, and you've been able, with all the SSS pressure, you still stayed pure. When you came on campus, with all the pressure, you stayed pure. Last day on campus, last paper. If you are not careful, you fall. And then after that, you ask yourself, why did God fail me? He didn't fail you. His plans for you are greater than what you are thinking. Maybe that paper. Look, there could be many options that could have happened. You could go to the hall and they will allow you to write. Regardless. Regardless of whether you are paid or not. You can have an anonymous person paying for your fees. Look, you can even have your lecturer put his own money on the line for you. Because he knows how good you are. Anything can happen. Don't give up on God. Because he will never give up on you. Don't get at any point in your life and say that God has abandoned me, so I'm looking for another option. As long as that, uh, that option is not godly, don't go for it. They said, look, we know God can save us from this fire. But it doesn't matter. Even if he doesn't save us, we know the word of God so much so that we are not going to bow to any other God. Regardless of the, I mean, the consequence. Fire. That's fine. We can go into the fire. God can save us. But if God doesn't save us and he will look on for us to be burned alive, that's fine. But we are not willing. It is only those who know their God. It is only those who know they are God, who make such decisions. Amen. You know, the reason most of the time we, gave up, we give up at the last minute is because we don't know our God. Peter, Paul, Silas, they were all put in prison. But God rescued them. He rescued them. They were not afraid of prison. They didn't say that because of prison, we're not going to do what we have to do. They still did. They were put in prison. But they were rescued. Hallelujah. Listen, if God can open the Red Sea and can close it, hallelujah, God can open every door for me. And he can also shut every door. He is God. Who do you see him to be? Who do you know him to be? Who is he to you? Who is he? Do you really know him? Do you really, really know him? Because if you do know him, beloved, we will be better people than we are now. We will not go for the options we go for. It's simply because we don't know him. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, you can sit down. I, I just want to end um, this morning. Let's go to um, my key scripture for this morning in uh, Genesis 25, 29 to 34. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished, hungry. He came back very hungry. Hallelujah. So when he came back, he said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was called Edom. Edom means red anyway. Jacob replied, first, sell me your bet right. I'm hungry. Somebody has food. Hallelujah. I want food. He says, okay. In today's world, 
It could be anything. You want an example? I don't have a job. I need a job badly. Somebody offers you a job. But you're a Christian. You know when you have to come to church. You know when you have to serve the Lord. And somebody offers you a job. That doesn't allow you to go to church anymore. What will you do? You need a job. What are you going to do? You go for the job? Or you say that, no, I mean, looking at the schedule, I can't take this job. Everybody will say you're a lazy person. Right, there's nothing up there. I'm here. She's just going like. <laughs> she looks at the ceiling and shakes her head. What's there's just nothing on the ceiling? Look at me and shake your head. Then how we cry? Is that not the reality? I can say for a fact, 99% of us will go for the job. The 1% that will not go for the job, probably, they've passed through certain things before. Now, how many of us have blamed Esau? That ah, a bianinti. He sold his bet, right? How many of us have blamed this one? Okay. How many of us from this morning blame ourselves? Because if you blame this one, who is worse? This one never had an example. You have one. I have one. You have one. That's the reality. Jacob said, <laughs> Jacob replied, first, sell me your bet right. Yeah, Jacob is a bad guy. I'm not here for Jacob this morning. He knows what he wants. He's going after what he wants. Hallelujah. It is up to you. The devil will come to you with everything he wants. With every trick possible. Say Jacob is the devil. That's your problem. I don't care. But the point is that he will come after you with every kind of trick under the sun. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. First tell me your bet right. First tell me that if I give you the job. That's your church church thing. You won't do it here. Hallelujah. Hello. What is that? Oh, not here. Okay. Amen. So, if such a thing comes to you, what are you going to do? Are you sure it's not easy? Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. First, sell me your bet right. First, tell me you're not going to go to church if you want the job. Amen. Next verse. Let's hear what he said. <laughs> Look, 
I'm about to die. Esau said, what good is the birthright to me? Beloved in the Lord, let me draw your attention to something. Do you know that Isaac was alive? And Rebecca was alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Are these parents so wicked that they will not provide food for their children? Sometimes it is not just. about this food because I believe strongly that was not the first time he came back from the field hungry and any time he came no matter what the circumstance he had food to eat it is his greed for the food of his brother Still be a way for you more by force with a so DB. Look, when we were kids, your mother would say, Don't eat this food from this place. But since it's too far with him, you forget what your mother said. You will eat and she will beat you. In fact, sometimes you tell yourself, Even if I eat this and she will beat me, I will I'll take the beating afterwards. But as for this food, I want to eat. It's the same thing. Look, he could have had options. The truth is that he had some greed for that food, number one. Number two, watch it closely. He did not respect his birthright. Some of us don't respect the fact that we are Christians we don't cherish it look let me tell you something cherish your identity as a Christian because it didn't come cheap you see this is, this is the key we thought because we just opened our mouth to say something we are Christians and that is it someone had to die shed his blood so that you can say those things. Because if he had not died, it doesn't matter what you have said. It doesn't matter what you would have done. You wouldn't have had salvation. So anytime, anytime you taking your identity as a Christian for granted, think about what Jesus did. That is why in Hebrews chapter 10, it talks about the fact, from 26 going, it talks about the fact that when you do certain things, you are trampling on the blood. He says it in chapter, I think, 6, and he takes, says it again in chapter, no, no, I mean, go down. <coughs> Sorry. Go, go down. I mean, I think it's uh, a very... Uh, 30, 30 or something like that. Yeah. Hallelujah. We, we, we all as believers, we need to understand what God is doing in this time. Because if we don't understand, we're going to make the same errors. That uh, In verse 29, sorry, verse 29. It says that, how much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? When we keep living our lives in sin and overlooking who we are in Christ and our identity in Him, He says that we are doing what? We put in the blood down and we're just making it look like it's nothing. Beloved, my sin and your sin 
means a lot to Jesus. Let us not take these things for granted. Oh, wait a second. Yes, she. I guess she will radiate him. Because there are certain things we do today. No, wait. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? If you are the son of the president, you can't go around doing anything that you like. So who are we? As, uh, I mean, I don't know. Do, do you know who you really are? Hmm? Do we really know? Do we know our identity? In fact, do we know the God we serve? Do we really know him? Hmm? want to know do we beloved do we know him we need know now we need senior one casa do you know your identity as a child of god do you know where he's lifted you up to you are not ordinary hallelujah i think we don't know who we are we, we don't know who we are in Christ. Because if we know who we are in Christ, we will not live the lives we live. We will not do the things we do. Who are we? Who are you? If you know your father can provide you walk as, as, as someone whose father can provide. You don't go begging when you know your father can provide. How many of us will go begging when we know that our father is able to provide what we need? Hallelujah. Let me ask you a simple question. You, you, have, you have children. Yeah, stand up, let me ask you a question. Can you give her the mic? How would you feel when you can provide for your children? At least you can provide the basic things they need and they go begging your neighbors for them. How would you feel? Very bad. Inadequate. I can't hear her. Yeah? I'll feel inadequate. You feel inadequate? Which means what? You clap for your children. Listen, it is not something you cannot provide. It's something within your means to be able to provide for your children. Yet they go to your neighbor and beg. You'll be angry. Okay. How many, do you believe God can provide everything that you want? Yes. Do you ask him for everything? Yes. And wait patiently for him. Not all the time. Where about if your children don't do that all the time? Hmm? You're a parent. He's a parent. He's our father. So he's a parent. Just like, like you are. You get offended. You get angry yes. at your children. How do you want him to feel? Is God inadequate? No. Can he provide everything? Yes. So, how about if you make him look like he's inadequate? What do you think he feels? He gets angry. And what, does, what do you think that your neighbors will think of you when your children keep doing that? 
They will think that I can't provide for them. What do you think the devil thinks of God because of your actions? God can't provide. I want us to understand this morning that every action and every decision that we make on earth has a kind of replication in heaven. You want proof? Job. Job. Because the devil told, accuses God. If you continue giving him this kind of protection, how can he ever say he's not going to really serve you? If you keep providing for him like that, how can he ever say that he's not going to provide for him, that he's not going to save you? Take your hands off. Let's see. Whether you're too known that your children are faithful. Let's see whether they are indeed faithful. And God is so proud of you. He knows. He said, Vivian, she's my daughter. And I know who she is. Satan, go ahead. And she doesn't even get to your house. At your gate, you fall. How would, how, let, let, me, let, me, let me do this. How would you feel when you know your kids have been really, I mean, trained in such a way that they will not fail you? And you make, you talk about them when you are with your friends and colleagues. You talk about them. And the very things that you said about them, in their presence, they just mess up miserably. How do you feel? Devastated. How do you feel? How do you think God, God must feel after he has said all that he would say about Job and Job doesn't live up to expectation? Do you realize that God has emotions? Do you know how we grieve the Holy Spirit? This is one of the ways we grieve the Holy Spirit. He's there to protect us. And he says, you're going to sin. How many of us know that when we are going to sin, most of the time, God prompts us through his Holy Spirit. And we still go ahead and sin. How do you think he feels? Grieved. And the Bible says, do not grieve him. Is this sinking home? Look, I want you to look at Christianity in the very simplest of ways. Just put your life on the line and say, Jesus, regardless of whatever comes, whether I'm famished or not, I respect my identity. I won't belittle my bed, right? I wouldn't say it doesn't mean anything. You know, sometimes when in doing this, we forget that we're going to stand before him one day. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me, sit down. Let me, let me finish. Can we go back to uh, 20, um, Genesis 25? Let's hear what he, he said after, um, look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the bed right to me? I'm about to die. What good is that bed right to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his bed right to God, Jacob. Now, listen. Before, this was not a written oath. And you may think that the things you say, they don't hold. Let me tell you something. Go to the, even today, 
in this century still oral and verbal contracts they hold go and ask the lawyers oral contracts yeah but i didn't write anything but you said it and they will still be held you'll be held responsible you i mean it will hold against you and unfortunately for him at that time even the ten commandments had not been given so nothing has been written <laughs> everything is by god himself when he promised abraham on oath it was by it was oral it was verbal everything before now was verbal so if you say that yes i give you my bed right give me the food from that day you cease to be the firstborn I'm not here to talk about whether you can lose your salvation or not. That's not what I'm doing this morning. But I want you to pay attention to certain things in the Bible. Because we, we pretend as if God has changed. He's not changed. He's not. Hallelujah. <laughs> Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him selling his birthright to jacob 34. then jacob gave his son some bread and some lentils to you he ate it you know jacob is so wise the devil behaves in the same way hallelujah you know the first th when i when i spoke about the exam and things what did you need only your school fees but you had lunch as well amen and even the money you will just definitely have more than the school fees he asked for steel but he got something else hallelujah he he will make it look nice and he will make you praise him ah jacob will cry good i asked for stew but he's giving me bread too he's forgotten that he's lost something crucial something spiritual something that can only be had when god gave, gives it to you you don't decide who should be born first hallelujah god decides so if god brought you out first it's for a reason and you don't respect it you lose it hallelujah so he lost it Bible says he ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Where did you are me? That's the I mean, I don't care about it. I, I needed a job. I've gotten a job. Yeah. We've forgotten the consequences. It comes with something. Hallelujah. And he did not know that because of this, he's going to lose the father's blessing until the day the father was about to die he forgot what he had done you can hey, you can say everything you want about rebecca i don't care the guy doesn't deserve it he's no longer the firstborn he sold it he doesn't deserve the father's blessing hallelujah you can hey the, uh, whatever rebecca can be a cheat he she, she can be whatever you want to call her that's for another day the point is that that guy doesn't deserve the bad right he doesn't deserve the blessing because he sold it if you sold it you sold it how many you see you can go to all night 100 years you've lost it all along you've lost it you are crying your tears are falling on rocks and it's go wa washing away it's not doing anything you lost it when you really did what you did and you did not repent this guy never repented we do certain things and we think that's the end of the story no repent if you don't repent you can cry as much as you want hallelujah 
Go to Hebrews. Let me show you what happened, what Hebrews says about this incident and when the blessing was ready. Oh, Hebrews 12, 16 and 17. And not only was he uh, uh, looking for food, but there was other things. He said, see that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau. The guy was not only after food, but he was doing other things. You see, the things you are doing are compounding and it's going to let you do other things that is going to really cut you away from God. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal, my goodness, a single meal, one meal, one meal, one meal. How many of us are selling our bed rights for 100 cities? For something small. For one meal. Who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the eldest son? 17. Afterward, as you know, and as I know, when he wanted to inherit his, this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he went to his father after he had made a meal, he said, oh, but Jacob has come for it. Oh, father, um, no, please, please. The father didn't know what had happened, but God knew. The father didn't know because this guy never told his father what he had done. And do you think Jacob is going to say it? He will say it. But divinely, by, 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 the, uh, by, the, by, by spiritual, uh, 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 what has happened in the spiritual atmosphere has been sealed. So in heaven, by his own words, he has said, I don't need it. And because you don't need it, you've lost it. And because he's lost it, whether Jacob gets it by what means, God is watching. Do you think God was asleep when Jacob was doing it? Jacob and his mother were doing what they were doing. God was not asleep. Do you think God is weak not to have turned things around? Huh? No, I'm asking you, Look, let me show you something. If God decides to do something, even through the blind Jacob, hallelujah, when he decided to bless Joseph's sons, he went like this. Joseph said, no, that's not the, that's not the case. Do this. He said, Jacob, Joseph tried to move the father's son. He said, I know what I'm doing. Shut up. The fact that I'm blind doesn't mean I don't have a brain. I'm blind. I don't see. But I have eyes. Spiritual eyes. That can see. That this one will be bigger than this one. Hallelujah. God knows. Look. Don't think God is asleep. God knows who is going to make you. Let everyone think that you are not the person. If God decides you are, you will be. If you only will respect what God had given to you. Unfortunately, many of us, we don't respect the identity we have. We say we are Christians, but we don't really respect our identity. So we walk around and we make people make mockery of Christianity. Today, or yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, the head of Trinity, he was one year ahead of me in secondary school. The head of Trinity. And yesterday, he's, he was saying it, he said that today we have made Christianity become nuisance because of our actions, because of the things we do, because of the things we say. 
because of what is going on around us. How can we say we serve a God who can provide everything? We serve a God who created the heavens and the earth. Yet we go to unbelievers and beg for hundred cities. How? How can we reconcile that? How can we reconcile that? Tell me. Tell me. Where is your identity? Who are you? Who are you? We've sold our birthright. We don't believe in the God we serve. And we don't trust him. Do you believe he's your provider? Is he your only source that you go to? Only last week, or probably two weeks ago, I was saying something to you. I said, if you believe that God is your provider, you can hold on to him, regardless of the circumstance. And I said that, if God provides for you today through this, don't make this your God. Because tomorrow, you will be standing by this, but God will be here by this. And when he does something through this, don't look this as your, as your God. Still look up to him. Because tomorrow, he will be going to this air condition. And I explained to you, three occasions, he provided food for Elijah. One, by ravens. Two, by angel. And three, by a widow. Who provided? Did he only provide through an angel? So if, God, if, 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 uh, if uh, Elijah said, yeah, when I was hungry, God made a raven provide for me. So now he begins to pray, raven, bring God's food. Raven, bring God's food. And God sent an angel. No, 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 it's a raven I'm waiting for. Raven, bring... The raven is not hearing you. And because... You are waiting for a raven. Even when God is bringing an angel, you don't see. Go to God and say, God, you provided for me yesterday. I don't care how it came. But today, I want to see your hand again. If he's going to come by angel, if he's going to come by who, that's not my business. My business is that you are my provider. He is your only source. None of us as Christians have two sources. We have only one. Only one. And that one source, beloved, is because of your identity. Your birthright. Don't sell it for anything. Don't let that birthright go for anything. Let me tell you, many of us are sitting here this morning and one way or the other, we blame God that God has not provided. It's not about God. It's about us. Some of us have sold our birthright. So what we are asking God is not going to come because we've sold our birthright. Bible says Esau afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected, even though he sought the blessing with tears. Listen, something that he was not supposed to cry for it, ask for it, do anything. Be, listen, <laughs> beloved in the Lord, when the time for the blessing came, did Esau go to his father to ask him for blessing? Who called who? The father called him and he said, go kill an animal for me, make me stew for me, let me eat and then you take your blessing. He 
Esau didn't have to go ask for it. But the father didn't know that that birthright has been sold already. So many people, hey, yeah, but he, he, Jacob was bad. He can be bad. But the point I'm making to you this morning is that Esau did not deserve the blessing. No matter how you look at it, he sold it. And heaven approved it. Once he sold it, you've sold it. And he did it under oath. He didn't just say it. He swore before God. And God was listening. Isaac was asleep. Isaac was not around, but God was there. Because he, they called on the name of the Lord. They don't swear just like that. They swore by God. So God was hearing. They didn't call Isaac. When that oath was made, it wasn't made in the name of Isaac. So Isaac was not part of the deal. God was part of the deal. And when he said it and God said, okay, fine. It was sealed. It was sealed. Maybe if he had repented, God would have considered him. I don't know. But the truth is that he did not. So many of us are sitting here this morning. And the problem is not God. The problem is us. We've sold our bet right. And we are still crying. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. You will not be able to change what you have done. Has God abandoned me forever? No. If you can repent this morning, he will restore you. If you can go back to him, but don't say it with your mouth, just with your mouth. Let it come out of your heart. Go to God and tell him, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't trust you. Hallelujah. I didn't trust you. Look, the actions, your actions today will determine your future. And certain things you've done today, they are ahead of you. He sold his birthright some years ago. But when he got to the time of the blessing, he lost it. His actions yesterday determined his future. We are going to pray. These are not the times that you, you, it, this is a time that it has to come from here. You have to open your heart this morning. Where do you stand? Are you in right standing with God? Are you in right standing with God? Maybe it's because you've sold your bed right. That's why you've been crying, but nothing is happening. There's an opportunity. For he says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Beloved, let not this world and the desires that you have for the things of the world determine your future. Make a decision today that Jesus, I'm all for you. Make a decision today that I repent of all that I've done selling my back right. I didn't trust you as my God. I thought you would not be able to provide. Sometimes we think it's taking too long. And because of that, we sold our bed right and went for something else. No excuse or tears could save Esau. You can give excuses as much as you want. Yeah, but at that time it was hard. That's, it wouldn't be accepted. I just want you to understand, it will not be accepted. Yeah, by that time, my father was dead and I didn't have anybody to help me. That wouldn't be accepted. If your father 
is dead. God is not dead. If you trust him, he will come through for you. This morning, search through your heart. Go deep into your heart. Go deep into your heart and call on him and him alone. Let him know that you repent. Tell him, Lord, I want to start this life again. I want to start it afresh. It's tough. It's difficult. I've made errors. I've made mistakes. But I don't want to live my life like this any longer. Let's be upstanding. Thank you, Jesus.